What's up guys? I got asked for my take on stoicism today, so I want to put out a really quick video on it. I'm super busy this weekend. I've got some exciting announcements to come, so stay tuned. Hopefully I get a chance to get all the way through this video. If not, oh well, but I want to try to knock this out because I, I do think it can spur some interesting discussion. So I'm going to be talking about stoicism in the framework of ideas that make it easier to defend yourself intellectually or stand your ground, just understand what people are saying and not be taken advantage of, or ideas that make it easier for other people to take advantage of you. And I do think stoicism actually makes it easier for other people to take advantage of you. I'll get to that in a bit. Okay, so in the fitness space and like men's spaces, etc., we talk all the time about how a man needs to be able to defend himself, how a man needs to be able to defend his family. And, you know, almost inevitably people are talking about physically, right? Um, you know, the reality is in the modern world, people that are coming to take advantage of you predominantly are not going to be, you know, big athletic guys with good hair and letterman jackets that are going to try to stuff you in lockers. Typically, it's going to be people that are trying to take advantage of you, not physically, you know, in the realm of ideas, intellectually, financially, things of that nature, right? Now, obviously, there are still physical threats, but I mean, in most cases, situ situational awareness or perhaps an equalizer are going to be better options there. Not to say don't train martial arts or whatever, but just understand that being good at jiu-jitsu is not necessarily going to defend you against the vast majority of people that are trying to take advantage of you or even harm you um, in the modern age, not necessarily physically, although, you know, if they get you to do something that's physically harmful to you by convincing you to do something that is actually harmful, then, you know, they did harm you physically, right? But, you know, we're not talking about, you know, cavemen with clubs. For the most part, when we're talking about threats, people trying to push you around, bully you, make a fool out of you, get you to do something, right? We're talking about people who are going to come to you with words and ideas and take advantage of you that way, right? So I think it's very important to approach um, your education with the, with the mindset of being able to engage in the realm of ideas and defend yourself in the realm of ideas. So, you know, what we learn, um, yeah, that, that, should, that should be, you know, a big part of the framework for how you decide like what you're gonna put your time into as far as getting educated, okay? So keep that in the back of your heads. I'm gonna talk about stoicism for a second so one what i would say about stoicism to start with is it's almost i like what i want to say is it's 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 almost not even philosophy it's almost um like basically ancient classical self-help book type stuff i mean i'm not going to get away with that obviously when you're talking about philosophy and then you get into the question of what is philosophy and that's going to be a really sticky subject that could take you know hours right um, what I will say is just like in sciences, you know how there's a division between um, the hard sciences and the soft sciences like chemistry, uh, physics, geology, certain elements of biology, things like that are considered to be hard sciences. Um, and that's contrasted with softer sciences like psychology, sociology, and God forbid, like political psychology or political uh, science. If you, I don't even know if that counts. Is that even a soft science? I don't know. It's that's like super soft, right? Like you have you have the hard sciences, and then you have like softer sciences, and then they just get off like into la la land, right? And it, it's exactly the same way in philosophy. You have the hard, you have the harder side of philosophy, the just more grounded and rigorous stuff. We're talking like logic, obviously, epistemology. Epistemology is the study of how like what our foundation for knowledge is, how we know things and you know how we justify that. Um, those are the harder aspects of philosophy. And then that's contrasted with a bunch of other stuff like, you know, you have aesthetics, certain parts of ethics, although ethics has a harder and softer um, angle to it. There, you, it, you can, it, ethics is kind of like, I think for philosophy, it's kind of like, kind of maybe where biology is and sciences, it kind of bridges the, gap it's not it's certainly not the hardest but it's also um, not super soft but then it trails off into a bunch of stuff and you know at, at the far end of soft philosophy you get into just super like woo like whatever just like people thinking about stuff type stuff and it's not super rigorous and that's where we find um that's where we find uh stoicism right 
And that's dangerous because it's it's tempting to just get into because you can just anyone who has, you know, decent intelligence and, you know, some level of vocabulary can just get into it easily, understand it, you know, feel like they're educating themselves, feel like they're um, you know, doing philosophy, so to speak. Um, so that's very appealing. Whereas if you try to get into like logic or epistemology or something like that, that's rough. I mean, logic is boring. It's dense. You're going to want to fall asleep. It's not exciting. You're not going to want to get into it, but it's so valuable. Um, you know, logic is the study of the structure of like propositions, how they relate to each other. Um, that's super important because that's how people will often present arguments to you, right? I mean, that, that goes into, you know, all of the argumentation you're going to see, whether it's in, in fitness or anything else, like, you know, logical arguments will be a part of it, right? Um, but then it's also important to know that many arguments that are made are not using formal logic, and that's okay, too. That's not necessarily a bad thing. There are plenty of other legitimate methods of argumentation, you know, it, people don't even necessarily know what logic is and the term is often misapplied more often than not when people say logical what they mean is like rational or wise or something like that but you know logic deals with the relationship of ideas you know if all athenians are greek and socrates is athenian then socrates must be greek you know you can't argue that all athenians are greek and that socrates is athenian and then deny that socrates is greek right it's impossible you know if the first uh two premises are true it's impossible for the conclusion not to be true, right? But that says nothing about the truth of the actual premises, right? How do we know Socrates is Athenian? Well, my history professor told me so. Ah, that's a that's a, a logical fallacy, right? An appeal to authority, right? Okay, but if you if you've studied logic, you know it actually isn't, right? Um, it might be a perfectly fine standard of evidence for establishing the truth of the premise, as long as all parties involved, you know, just agree that it, that my history professor said so is satisfactory to establish that Socrates is Athenian, right? Um, it would only be an appeal to authority if you used authority as a rationale for rejecting the conclusion, um, that Socrates is Greek after accepting the premises, right? You can't, you can't say, I agree, all Athenians are Greek and Socrates is Athenian, but Socrates wasn't Greek because my history professor said so. That's the logical fallacy. That doesn't work. But you see, like, a lot of things that people are claiming are logical fallacies really aren't, right? So hopefully you can already see how, as boring and lame as it is, like, understanding a little bit about logic can actually help you defend yourself in the realm of ideas because you can you can see when people are trying to just kind of bluff you well they may not even know what they're doing they're kind of trying to bullshit you to be honest with you by you know claiming that whatever you're saying or whatever this other guy's saying is a logical fallacy when you know in many cases um it's perfectly fine for the type of argument that you're doing um so that's something that it it sucks but it, it can definitely help to defend you right um because, you know, not everything is, not everything is actually using logic, you know, really we use logic um, and, you know, the rules of formal logic once we have an, an agreed upon set of facts to determine how those facts relate to each other, right? Um, that being, you know, you can't, if we all agree on the facts and someone structures their argument logically, you can't accept someone's premises and then reject that correctly structured conclusion, you know, like you can't just say, hey, you're a liar. Like, that doesn't work. That would be an ad hominem, right? But if the only support for a particular premise is someone's word and that person has a history of lying, that's a totally legitimate thing to bring up as a reason for rejecting the premise. That's not an ad hominem. And people have no idea, especially on Reddit, they have no idea what that is, right? Um, in the real world, arguments are often just trying to establish the facts of the matter, the premises, um, not necessarily how they relate logically. So, Honestly, you know, the majority of the time when someone accuses another person of committing a logical fallacy, it's, it's a misuse of the term. They don't actually apply. And, you know, people don't understand what is and isn't a logical argument. And, you know, that yeah, I hope you can see how that has some practical implications for, you know, what we think rational discourse should look like. It's 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 OK to make a Chad homonym, as I like to call them, in most cases, because you're not actually denying someone's conclusion based on, you know, some attack on the character you're like what you're saying about their character or you know their history or whatever the case may be has 
direct relevance on the quality of the information that they're giving you and, you know, whether they sh we should accept their word on something, right? Um, and it, it's that way with a lot of fallacies. They, you know, they, um, they don't work specifically in a certain context in logic, um, but they actually are perfectly fine for other modes of, of reasoning in many cases. And you're not going to get that from watching this YouTube. I'm, I'm not trying to educate you on that. I really think you ought, if you really want to be able to defend yourself in the realm of ideas, as boring as it is, I hate to say it. I think you should, I strongly recommend you open a logic textbook, get, you know, get an old used logic textbook, the older, the better, they're all the same. You know, logic hasn't changed. Try to get through a little bit of it. Try to understand at least the basics. And then you'll, then you'll, you'll be able to, trust me, you'll spot so much that people are trying to get away with. It's just, that doesn't work in the realm of uh, argumentation. If you ever have some spare time, that is something that'll really, really help you to defend yourself, right? Um, it, when, you know, when you're dealing with arguments, it'll, it'll help you not buy into things that you shouldn't buy into or just get, really just get intimidated by people who, um, you know, who try to use all these fancy terms and try to use, you know, certain arguments on you, you'll be able to stand up for yourself a lot better, okay? Same thing with epistemology, and that's the study of knowledge and its foundations. And it's it's extremely important because we go through life with a bunch of knowledge that we assume to be true without ever questioning these assumptions. We have a bunch of ideas that we just assume are true, but we don't really question how we understand that, right? And as it turns out, when we apply a, a sufficient level of scrutiny to a lot of those assumptions, they're not nearly as well supported as we might like to believe. And that can be really disconcerting, especially if the first time you encounter that is when some kind of pseudo intellectual is challenging your beliefs by questioning them at kind of a foundational granular level. Um, cause it, he's got a point it's, it's disconcerting because he actually has a point. Like, how do you really know, man? You know, you might find yourself, you know, flustered because you might not be able to find a rock solid irrefutable basis for your belief, a way to prove what you believe to be true beyond all doubt. Right. But if you've already studied epistemology, you'll have been there, you'll have done that. You'll know that nihilism or just kind of doubting everything, um, You'll know that it's easy to start or hard to finish, as the saying goes. Nihilism is easy to start, hard to finish, that's the saying. Um, so what you'll recognize is that he's he's doing something that I like to call tactical nihilism. He's strategically subjecting a specific claim that you don't that um that he doesn't want to acknowledge as being true to a level of scrutiny, but he would not want that he would not want um many of his beliefs to be subjected to that same level of scrutiny. So he's not just being a global nihilist, just like Hey, we don't know anything. We don't have, we can't really know anything. We have no solid foundation of knowledge for anything. He doesn't want to do that because there are things that he deeply believes to be true. And, and we're, you know, we're talking about someone trying to, you know, someone trying to um, hoodwink you, right? Like he's got other beliefs that are important to him that he, he doesn't want to subject to the same level of scrutiny. So, you know, once you've studied a little bit of um, epistemology, you'll be able to spot that. Um, you'll be prepared for that. Uh, and you know you can you can just understand that people are people are essentially unfair unfairly attacking your ideas um, by subjecting them to excessive scrutiny because in practice if we did that we would have no we would have really not a whole lot to go off of in most areas of our lives because I mean once you if you really try to apply that degree of scrutiny not much of anything really holds up but we honestly do just assume a lot of things to be true and that's how we go about our daily life and we kind of need to do that to get by so it's really helpful to be able to just kind of know that anything that you know somebody can make anything seem unsupported but what they're not going to do is do that to the things that they um that they believe and that are important to them so um it it's very helpful to uh to know that so that you know whenever someone tries to just you know, be selectively um, nihilistic about something. You can just tell them, you know, knock it off before I start subjecting some of your core beliefs to the same level of scrutiny, and you will find out how hard the abyss gazes back, you disingenuous little shit. You know, it happens all the time. Like, I know it sounds crazy, but this will actually really help you in just, like, determining fact from fiction just just not getting not letting people push you around intellectually because it's really easy to get bullied intellectually I've, i mean i've seen hard men like the hardest of men you know like david goggins type men you know fist fighters you know gunfighters like dangerous men hard men 
get absolutely bullied and pushed around by some like pencil neck who just happen to be better with words than them because they, you know it's 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 a realm that's outside of their comfort zone you know they're comfortable squaring up and fighting with someone but they're not comfortable with their words and uh, epistemology just like logic um really boring really hard to get into but so worth it because it, it helps you stand your ground a lot better and honestly on that note vocabulary man just reading anything just anything with a lot of big words like the older the older the better it can be fiction dude just read read old fiction if you like it just improving your vocabulary so people can't hit you with words you don't know i mean that that's huge for not getting pushed around uh but that, that was a little side note okay so the again that that's kind of the more hard philosophy and those are the two areas that i think are most beneficial to defending yourself intellectually not getting pushed around now let's look at uh stoicism i'm not going to get into like a real deep dive on stoicism i this video has already run longer than um it probably should i'm gonna to try to keep this to like no more than 25 minutes um here's my primary gripe with stoicism and this is especially going to be true if stoicism is really your only um your only exposure to philosophy which frankly for a lot of people who like stoicism it is the emphasis on focusing only on what you can personally control and on, um, you know, on, on personal responsibility, focusing only on what you can control, not focusing on things that are outside your control, not worrying about what other people do, but only focusing on what your reaction is, right? That's so my issue with that is. I think it makes people easy to take advantage of, quite frankly. I mean, I think it's it's honestly kind of the perfect, it's the perfect tool to kind of gaslight people into accepting things that they shouldn't, to accepting grifters, con artists, corruption, whether in the government or in corporations and media, corruption by the powerful, um, just social decay, things of that nature. Stoicism is kind of the perfect way to um, to sigh up, you know, ambitious, uh, you know, smart, driven young men into going along with a bunch of things that they probably shouldn't. It, it, it works really well at, at several levels. Like at the at the base level, a lot of stoicism. I mean, it's become very popular on the internet these days. And while I'm not calling everyone who talks about stoicism a grifter, probably the guys who really talk in, about philosophy themselves are, you know, they're mostly just talking about philosophy. They're not necessarily grifting, right? But it 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 definitely infects. Um, it you see a lot of a lot of carryover um, into, I, I guess, a lot of the like, personal development grifters, the guys that are going to try to sell you really really expensive courses that will supposedly you know, get you, get your head on straight and make you start earning millions of dollars and, um, you know, being successful about all that, you know, the mindset guys. Stoicism is just perfect for them because it, you know, when, you know, when you pay them some inordinate amount of money for their course that's supposed to teach you to change your life, you know, maybe, maybe it's something like, um, you know, Bedros Kiulin or however the hell you're supposed to say that he's going to spray you with a water hose and, um, and PT you for three days and charge you, I think, $20,000 now for it, yell at you and let you pretend to be a Navy SEAL while he just yells at you and demeans you if that somehow fails to, um, <laughs> you know, deliver <laughs> the promised results of making you a successful entrepreneur. Um, well, you know, don't, don't look for other people to blame for your situation. Focus on what you can control. You can only control your own actions from here, your own reaction to things, right? It's just, it's, it's the perfect way to get people to just accept things and not criticize them, right? Um, and that's, you know, when we look at, um, I, I talked about it, if, if stoicism is your only exposure to philosophy, I think it's especially dangerous there. If you, obviously, if you, if you are familiar with everything else, it's not going to be dangerous to you and you might actually find some value in it, right? But it, let's, talking about your only exposure to philosophy, one, one good concept from philosophy, and this isn't super hard philosophy, but um, if you look at the concept of the golden mean, uh, the idea that a virtue is kind of a, a happy middle between two vices, one of the major failings, I think, of, Stoic, of Stoicism, my primary practical gripe with Stoicism is that it puts, um, 
it complete it, it it fails to recognize that personal responsibility is on that continuum. You don't want an excess. You don't want too little. Obviously, too little personal responsibility will just make a bunch of excuses and not do any of the things that you can do to make things better, right? But on the other extreme, you're taking too much responsibility. You're taking responsibility for things that are not actually in your control. You're you're failing to blame others when they need to be blamed because we are social animals. We're not we're not like I don't know what what kind of animal isn't social. Um, like bears, I guess. Uh, bears mostly live alone and do their own thing, so they don't really need to worry about bear society. To my knowledge, I'm not an ecologist, but um, um, but yeah, no, we need to we need to worry about what other people are doing, and even if um. Even in some cases, we may not necessarily be able to directly control it, but we still need to pay attention and in a lot of cases talk about it. We have language. We can tell other humans, you know, about what other humans are doing. And, you know, even if we can't necessarily do anything about it, we can talk about it and get conversations going. That's what I'm trying to do now anyway. So, I mean, the big the big failing in Stoicism um, and its modern incarnations, like maybe Jocko Willing talking about just extreme ownership and personal responsibility, uh, by the way, uh, some signs i i don't know but there are some signs coming out now that he may not be as squeaky clean and good at taking responsibility as he would want to claim i'm i, I wasn't there I, but yeah you can look that up anyway anyway yeah so if you take if you are too high in the personal responsibility that's a vice too it's i would i would call that vice being a simp you're basically just letting people walk all over you you're not holding them accountable you know, everything in your life is a product of um, your own choices, or at least that's how you're supposed to look at it. And I, I get it. You can only control what you can control. But at a certain point, like, if we all have that atomized individual mentality, you know, no one's going to be talking about, hey, look, these people are screwing us over. They're doing bad things that are that are ruining the commons, right? We're all, it's, you know, if you if you are familiar with the concept of the tragedy of the commons, when you know, when something is held in common, like the idea is like maybe a field that all the animals are grazing on. If we all let our cows overgraze on it, eventually, you know, the field's going to be a barren wasteland. And because no one, no one person had the incentive to, um, you know, not destroy it. No one person owned it. You know, everyone was just trying to get the most they can out of it. And as a result, it, you know, the field is now a barren wasteland, right? And that, you know, you can look at our culture and society, just everything like that is kind of common. And, you know, if, if everyone has this kind of stoic, I'm going to control what's in my personal sphere of control, i.e. my actions and my thoughts, you know, no one's worried about, hey, this guy's over here ruining the stuff that we have in common, which can be, you know, any number of things, right? Um, stoicism, I don't think, has a good answer for that. Um, or, 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 no, it probably does. Honestly, it probably it, it probably does. They, they're probably someone does. But the prevalence. Let me let me let me rephrase. Let me rephrase that. Um, what I think, I think the um, the the spread of stoicism, especially when condensed to, you know, smaller sound bites that can be spread on you know an Instagram reel or what have you, is going to make people a lot um, more hesitant to you know, enforce, um, rules in the commons and, you know, keep bad actors from ruining things that we all share, right? Because, oh, you don't want to be worried about what anyone else is doing because then you're not, then you're not, um, worrying about what you can do and on your grind set, you know, don't worry about, um, what anyone else is doing. Just focus on your own bag. There, there's a lot of, there's a lot of crossover between stoicism and the, um, the gangster rapper, criminals um quit hating and get money hey stop worrying about whether my uh success as a you know as an artist was basically a way to do money laundering for drugs that you know that were destroying my community and just worry about what you're personally making money you know it, it's that it and i'm not saying i'm not saying um i'm not saying that stoics were necessarily gangsters i'm saying that that the, the philosophy totally enables gangsters, right? Um, and it works really well at multiple levels. Like like I said, the um, kind of the lower level grifters really like a lot of stoic ideas because it gives them a really easy way to gaslight people into not calling them on whatever they did. I mean, 
you know, you sell somebody a course, like I talked about it, it doesn't somehow like they pay you thousands of dollars and then they don't magically become a successful entrepreneur from it. I mean, you just, oh, well, you're clearly your mindset's off. Clearly you're not taking control of your, your own life. Um, you're not taking enough personal responsibility. You're trying to blame others. That's why it's not working for you. Right. You see, you see how that works. So, I mean, these, these people like directly personally benefit from it. So of course they spread these ideas, right? And you know probably to a certain extent in some you know in a corrupted format, right? Um, but then obviously at the higher level, people who aren't on Instagram, you know whether they be politicians, uh, government, uh, you know power players, uh, you know corporate, whatever, like the 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 people that have ultimately have a lot of power in the world, you know economically, politically, whatever, what have you. You know, they obviously benefit from this, too, because stoicism is a way it's a great way of just getting people who might otherwise, you know, the the young, motivated, curious men who might otherwise be their the greatest danger, getting them into a, a mindset of I'm not supposed to be looking at what anybody else is doing. I'm supposed to be focusing on me. I mean, it just it really it really diffuses a lot of potential resistance to people who are you know damaging society for everyone you know people who are you know destroying aspects of our economy to make a quick buck in the stock market or just you know whatever the case may be we're not going to get into that but i think you can see how the mentality of hey i'm going to focus on what i can control and not you know not worry about what other people are doing just my reaction to it especially when simplified and given to people who aren't necessarily that intellectually grounded otherwise you can see how that would enable a lot of bad behavior just at multiple levels of society from the low level grifter all the way up to the politicians and billionaires etc right so that's my primary gripe with stoicism okay so what i would urge you guys to do again is if you want to get into philosophy i know it's boring trust me i i, I took a lot of philosophy courses um, I ended up getting a philosophy minor, actually. It's boring, but the boring stuff is what, that's what's going to make you hard to push around because it's just going to, it's just going to make your framework of argumentation so much better. And it's just, you're going to, you're going to see the tricks people are trying to pull. And I'm not saying they may not even, they probably don't even know the tricks they're trying to pull. Um, but once you're, once you're better educated in the hard philosophy, um, you know, you'll be able to see that. And, and and once you're there, you know, I think it'll be a lot safer for you to get back into something like stoicism if you're interested in it. I mean, there's 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 tons of stuff that you can look into, and you know, stoicism might be one of those. But I would definitely urge you to, um, you know, ground yourself, educate yourself with kind of the basics first, that kind of that foundation, so that you can assess things for yourself. Um, because otherwise, you might be a little bit easier to take advantage of, kind of like Marcus Aurelius was by his wife and a gladiator. Allegedly, according to his, according to some sources, I'm not a historian. I have no way to tell you how to assess exactly how true that claim is. Maybe somebody made it up along the way. Who knows? But it's kind of it's kind of funny, and I always like to bring it up, and people get mad at me sometimes. But you know, allegedly, Marcus Aurelius was a cuck, and you could. Uh, you know, you could make the argument that all this, like, oh, I, I'm not going to worry about what externally happens to me. I'm just going to worry about how my reaction to it. Oh, okay, dude, <laughs> I, I'm going to worry about what I'm going to worry about what actually happens. You know what I mean? Um, there, there's another. I I can't. I'm not going to look up the source right now because I'm trying to do this really quick. But there's like, you know, there there's some there's some you know famous quote that I'm paraphrasing says more or less like if. If, you know, I lose everything in a house fire, my, you know, my whole family and all my possessions, um, you know, go up in flames in a house fire, but I get out and I have my virtue intact. Like, I, I still have my mind and my virtue. I can, you know, I'm still, I have lost nothing. I'm still rich. You know, that, that that's like, you, you guys probably know, some of you probably know what quote I'm talking about. I, I'm not going to try to source it. I haven't, like that, Google suck. I feel like, I feel like 2000. 2010 Google, I could just type exactly what I said in and I would find it. But modern Google is trash, so I know I wouldn't probably find it. But anyway, like, like is that really the mentality you guys want to... Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't like that. Um, but that being said, you know, feel free to get into stoicism after you've done the basic hard shit that will allow you to... Um, uh, better assess ideas. Oh, by the way, one... 
the more the more you get into like scientific theory, maybe philosophy of science, um, just basics of scientific um, research methods, that can help too. Because I mean, a ton of people are going to try to, you know, pull credentials on you with science too. That 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 probably could go up alongside um, a pistol. I don't know. That's that's a lot to tell someone to get into. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, that's kind of rough. Uh, that's extras for experts. But I mean, the more you know about science, the more you'll see people trying to hoodwink you uh, or just you know bluff you with something that really is kind of a paper tiger relative to what they're making it seem like. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, guys. Yeah, if you, if you want to be hard to take to be take to uh, take advantage of, up your vocabulary any by any means necessary. I think old fiction books are fantastic for that. Study logic, at least be able to rattle off a good definition of logic, understood, just under, at least understand what is and isn't formal logic and have some, you know, some idea about that. And, you know, a um, little bit of basic epistemology and you'll be hard to take advantage of. If you just get into stoicism and that's all you do, I feel like you'll be a lot easier to take advantage of. And it just, it just contributes to atomized individualism and we have way too much of that in society already you know all right it's kind of rambling and probably i i, I know this one isn't going to do that well in the algorithm because i mean probably no one wants a 30 minute ramble on um on philosophy but like i said i got asked about that today and i think it can provoke an interesting discussion so i'm gonna put it up anyway and just see what happens and if you guys like this let me know and if you don't like it, well, there's tons of training stuff on the way. Um, like I said, some announcements coming very soon. Stay on the lookout for that. In the meantime, feel free to buy anything that I've already put out, including you know, my book, Old Time Lifts for Modern Lifters, my program, Parking Lot Bodybuilding, a wonderful way to make sure that even if the apocalypse comes, because everyone becomes a stoic, so no one... Um, no one criticizes the people that are running our civilization into the ground and just kind of looting all, looting all of it to get, you know, short term, um, well for, uh, what was it, uh, for the, um, what's, whatever. Any, anyway, the, you get what I'm saying. I was, I'm, I'm losing the plot here, but anyway, you know, when, if they, if they wreck the economy and this becomes a post-apocalyptic wasteland, you're going to want to have uh, parking lot bodybuilding so you can continue to have a robust physical training plan in place. You're not going to need a whole lot. You'll be able to dominate the wasteland. You'll be kind of like that the um, the Lord Humongous from, uh, from Mad Max, except hopefully you won't have the face mask thing and you'll hopefully be a little bit nicer and you won't go bothering people to get gasoline. Hopefully you'll just be a little bit more chill and you know, um, kind of leaving people alone as long as they leave you alone, but in a jacked way and ready to defend yourself um, physically, but also intellectually, because you'll also have studied um, logic and epistemology. So when they come at you in the wasteland, um, you know, trying to tell you some some nonsense and accuse you of um, of logical fallacies, you'll be able to either just flex on them and be like, I'm more jacked get out of here or tell them actually dude this is a perfectly legitimate example of a time where i can criticize you and that's perfectly valid and it's not an ad hominem and a i'm right but b i'm also more jacked than you so i'm it either way i'm good and that's what's going to happen if you buy parking lot bodybuilding and also um learn some philosophy all right guys i'm going to sign off <laughs> i hope some of you find some interest in this